Greetings! I am the Game Show Guru, and welcome to Kids Month! In honor of the summer holidays, I've decided to take a break from the adult game shows and talk about the ones that were made for and starred kids. And if I'm going to talk about those kind of game shows, I have to mention the network that was responsible for most of them. First, a brief history lesson. Nickelodeon started out way back in December 1st, 1977, as QUBE in Columbus, Ohio by Warner Cable. At that time, it was known as the Pinwheel Network. The Pinwheel Network was relaunched as Nickelodeon on April 1st, 1979. The channel, which mainly broadcasts programs for kids to teenagers, has morphed and changed its programming over the years. My generation got to enjoy many fun forms of children's programming, including some kids' game shows. Over the years, Nick, as it's sometimes referred to, has created many kinds of game shows exclusively for its kid audience. And not one of them, I dare say, was ever a rebroadcast. Every game show that ever aired on Nickelodeon was its own original creation. Many of these shows were rebroadcast on its games and sports network, Nick Gas, and one of these shows was Finders Keepers. The original run of Finders Keepers ran from 1987 to 1988. This show was hosted by Wesley Yur. A syndicated version of the program was also made that ran from 1988 to 1990. This was hosted by Larry Toffler. The versions are very similar, and I will be reviewing both. I love the intro to this show. It gives the gameplay idea to the viewing audience and lets us engage right away in the content. Here, watch! If you can find the shell hidden in this picture, then you can win a run through our prize-filled house where what you find is what you keep on Finders Keepers! And now, here's the host of Finders Keepers, the man with the puzzling personality, Wesley! Also, I love the set of this show. I mean, this is a huge set for a kid's show, let alone a game show. All the rooms are there, and the stage, and we even see the stage pull apart to reveal the house in the back. That's incredible. First, the Yure version of the show. The contestants are two teams of 7th graders, a boy and a girl each. For those who have studied adolescence, this really does show how different some kids are at the ages of 12, 13, and 14. They are placed at a pair of house-shaped podiums with red and blue roofs, for the red and blue teams respectively. So, on to the gameplay, which the host gladly explains during the beginning of each show. In the first round, hidden picture clues are worth $25 and the right to search a room in the house in the second half of the first round, i.e. the right to search the bathroom, dad's den, etc. So, the host shows both teams a picture with six hidden objects inside it. He will read a clue, and the first team who thinks they see the object that that clue refers to buzzes in and circles the object with their electronic pen. Red for red, and blue for blue. If they are right, they win $25 and the right to search the room that clue counted for. If the team circled the wrong object, the other team gets to hear the entire clue, if it wasn't completely read the first time, and they get a chance to circle the right object. If neither team finds the right object, the object is revealed by the host and they go on to another object in the picture, playing for the same room. In this first round, there are six hidden objects and clues, as is true for the second round as well, but they will stop once four clues have been found, as only four rooms will be searched. After a recap of the Hidden Pictures first round, where the host says which rooms each team will be searching, we watch as the main set splits apart to reveal a huge two-story set with four rooms on the top and bottom and a stairwell in the middle. Look at this! The entire set splits apart! This thing is huge! 50-50, both teams. Both teams earn the right to search two rooms. The blue team will be searching the moon room and the pastry shop. The red team will be searching Tarzan and the tower. Come on, let's see what kind of mess we can make in our house. Let's take a look at our rooms that are doomed. We'll get tortured in the tower. Take a sway around the jungle with Tarzan and Jane. Get a pie in the face in the pastry shop. See what we can sniff out of Alibaba's bathroom. After a break, we come back to find the host in one of the earned rooms with that respective team. While some of the rooms make sense for a house, Dad's den, the bathroom, the kitchen, Big Sister's room, some of the rooms are just bizarre. The dungeon? Tarzan's bedroom? The tower? King's Tut's tomb? The moon? I know they just wanted some flavor, but these really aren't rooms of a house.
Just saying. Anywho, the host reads a clue to the pair of kids. This riddle indicates an item hidden somewhere in that room. The kids are then given 30 seconds to search the room quickly to find the object. They must find it and show it to the host for it to count, referred to as their guess. Simply touching the object in the room doesn't count. The rooms are full of traps that make debris fall all about and clutter rooms so it's harder to see the objects inside the room. These are fairly exciting to watch, seeing the kids rip things apart, and I have to admit that I would want to do that too. Here's a sample of a room search. Hi there. Alright. This is the scary room, isn't it? Mike and Jackie found it. They're in the lead. You guys can tie it up with this room. Here is the clue. It may not be magical, but this stuff bubbles with a wave of a wand. Ready to go? You know what we're looking for. Find it! The wave of a wand. What? There we go. We got the bubbles. The blow bubbles right away. We have a tie score. You found that so quick. If they find the object, they win $50 onto their score. If they fail to find it, the other team gets the $50. And there's a nice graphic, albeit extremely 80s, used on screen to keep track of the score. No, this is not it. Look, Mike, Jackie, look at this right here in Fighters Keepers. This Fighters Keepers, as you know, everything is breakable. And if we had broke that, we would have found the ace bandage. That means that the blue team now gets the $100, and we have a very close game again. Blue team has 325, red team has 375. After the rooms are searched and a score recap, the second round begins, which is basically a repeat of the previous rounds. They have a second hidden picture round, using the same picture as they showed in the show intro. They find four more hidden objects for $75 an object, and search up to four more rooms for $100 each. The remaining four rooms left in the eight-room house. One of the rooms in the house this time is the instant prize room. When they get to search that room, the lights will flash and the announcer will tell them what they have a chance to win if they find the object successfully. Have a look! <laughs> you switching sides, why? Yeah, because I'm going there. And you're going? All here. <laughs> All here. You, you've got her doing most of the work. Yeah, see, I'm going here and then I'm taking this out. And, and I'm going this and taking that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see how this strategy works. <laughs> the instant prize room! Step into the world of the astronauts as you suit up and conduct exciting space shuttle missions of your own during a week at the U.S. Space Camp near NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Back to you, Wesley. Ginger and Dwight, you won only one room in that, in that hidden picture round, but it was the instant prize room. The team with the most money at the end of the game wins and goes on to the bonus round, known as the Room Romp, Room to Room Romp, or as I like to call it, the Six Room Romp. The winning team is outfitted with helmets and goggles for their safety. The host reads the first clue while they stand in the starting room of the romp. The clock is set at 1 minute 30 seconds, quite a long time for bonus rounds, really. The players must find this first object which will have a clue card attached to it. This card indicates the next room to go to, as well as the next clue. The team must run quickly, along with the host, by the way, to that room. This process continues to find six objects and clue cards. A win is achieved if they find the last clue card slash object within the minute 30 seconds. These clues were fairly direct, as opposed to the rhyme or sentence length clues in the main game, it would be fairly short. Radio Cairo, the top of a two-piece, etc. I like the idea of the clue card attached to the objects. This way they need not present the item to the host to verify it is correct. It has a card, it's the item, move. I think that works really well with the speed of the bonus round, and the shorter clues help since the kids will be hurrying to win. We're not going to let her though. You know how to play this game? Yeah. Six rooms have hidden object clue cards. Every time you find one, you win a prize. Look on the back, it'll tell you the room to go to next. It'll give you the clue of the object we're looking for. Now, everybody in the audience, tell everybody at home the path for prizes today. Here's the clue. Candy is quicker. Wait, you wait till I, I say go. You have 90 seconds. Find it. All right, there she goes. Wicker is quicker. Keep going. Wicker. Look at the wicker. There they go, and they're looking at all the wicker baskets. Ginger and Dwight. There's more wicker. Look at the wicker. Can she find it? She got it. Go to show her. This fish is a fish. A dagger on the wall. I look on the wall. A dagger on the wall. Oh, he's tearing it up. Where is it? He's got it. All right, go to charge there. They are destroying our house. Where is it? This way. Charge in quickly. Well, we make this a tea house. He's got it. Go to the living room downstairs. 
but you guys got four prizes. Joe, tell them what they've won. They've won the Toys R Us gift certificate, the Language Master, the bikes, the skateboard, and a total cash and prizes worth over $2,400. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. A big day on Find Your Skateboard. So we'll see you next time. And now, the Toffler version. While Yuri's version was aired on Nickelodeon in first run, the Toffler version was in syndication on the Nickelodeon network. There were some major changes to the main game in this version. Instead of a drawn illustration on a computer screen for the kids to circle, we have a full-size painting of the picture. The two teams, rather than standing at side-by-side -side podiums, are now across the stage from each other, and Toffler has no podium to stand at. Next to the giant hidden picture mural are static cutouts of the hidden objects, a color set for each team. Prior to the start of the round, Toffler will say what some of the objects are, as well as the fact that... This is a chess piece. This is a fish hook. This is a half a record. This is a popsicle. Remember, there are more objects here than are found in our hidden picture. Seriously, what is up with this giant painting? Doesn't it cost more money to make this giant freaking artwork rather than projecting a small image onto a screen for kids to circle? Also, why have more objects than are hidden? Doesn't that just make it more confusing for the kids? As per the Yure version, a clue is read to the teams. A team must buzz in, and then one member runs over and grabs hopefully the respective object from the cutouts, and sticks it onto the board where it is hidden. They must line it up accurately for it to count, which is perfect when the object is so high that a short player can't reach it, though they would give it to the player usually. Other than this play change, the Toffa version does the hidden picture room and the room search rounds the same. For the right to search the torture tower. <laughs> This knight doesn't have a shield or blue team for us on the buzzer. Find it. Five seconds. Yes, there you go. Kiari got it. Woo! <laughs> Kiari took his time, found the knight. Way to go. Toffler, however, is not Yure. I don't know what it is about him, but he takes this game so seriously when... Dude, it's a kid's game show! Yuri understands that he's on a game show with kids. All smiles and joking and corniness. Where Toffler really cracks a freaking smile. Here, watch these clips and say for yourself. That is great, and you've got... Come with me to the pastry shop. <laughs> All right, Dwight and Ginger. Wait, wait, wait. Get over here. Stand over here. These floors are slippery. <laughs> now, be careful. Hello, blue team. So you guys just made that money back, huh? Yeah. Here goes your clue. Ooh, we got birds chirping in the backyard. I finally got it right. Um, here's the clue for $50. I asked my secretary to take a letter, and he went and took this big P. Find it! Is that your guess? Is that your guess? Ooh, no, they were thinking P for pepper, but you gotta... <laughs> They're getting sprinkled by the sprinkler. Hang on, just one second. They were thinking P for pepper, but alas, it was actually an actual P. A big old P. My secretary took a letter. It was the P, so the $50 goes on over to the red team. We have a tight match. The red team has $125. The blue team has $175. As my first host comparison, I have to give it to Yure. He is fun, energetic, and smiles. Where Toffler, you're just boring. And it's a kid's game show! How can you be bored hosting a kid's game show? Overall, Finders Keepers is a great kid's game show. It is sad that it didn't last as long as other game shows, because the concept is engaging for a kid's audience. And even as an adult, even I'm trying to find the objects along with the kids. It's definitely worth checking out.